Communication is one of the biggest challenges for any organization, as we all know. But in this industry specifically, in assisted living, we know that it can be even more complex. Uh, with the residents we serve who maybe have some cognitive impairment, um, maybe inabilities to actually vocalize what they want to share, um, certainly with emotions running high from family members and maybe other um, caseworkers who might be involved and grow attached, and certainly uh, employees too. It becomes an even bigger monster to try and get our arms around at times. So we want to talk today about behaviors as communication and trying to look beyond and look deeper into um, what they're really trying to convey to us more than what's actually being said or how it's being said sometimes. So Janice, I wanted to actually have you start off on this session and, and share what your perspective is, is looking beyond what's right in front of you. Yeah, that it's my belief that in, if you're going to be in this business, you actually have to be able to look beyond a, a behavior that isn't the behavior you're looking for. You have to be able to read what it is. Um, as you said, emotions run high and a family member may be responding in a way that has nothing to do with you and their response, they may be yelling, they may be, um, they may be crying and it's really a skill we all have to develop to be able to look underneath and say, all right, what is this person really looking for? If they're yelling at me, they're probably not really yelling at me. If they are, then I should say I'm sorry and fix whatever it is they're yelling about. But it is more likely that they're yelling about the circumstances that they find their loved one in or their expectations are different than our expectations. Lots of unrealistic expectations. They want us to fix their loved ones. Well, in some cases that isn't going to be able. That's not going to happen. Um, so in my, from my point of view, that learning how to communicate with folks without focusing on what would be inappropriate behaviors, you just, you, you have to look beyond that. You have to understand what's underneath. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you... Well, and I think that you can find it in all levels. I mean, in, in every interaction, you can think, oh my gosh. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> cause a, a behavior, someone yelling at you, or a resident throwing something, or is really kind of your first response is holy mackerel you know <laughs> let's get out of here I'm a flight kinda of girl you know this is terrible they're being awful it's so checking yourself at the door well, and so for to those speak fight type they have to check too right because yeah. they're gonna throw the plate back <laughs> you know and and that's inappropriate too so checking yourself at the door saying okay wait stop you know take a deep breath let's figure this out, the family member who's only here once a year for a few days. Mm -hmm. And during that time, they complain about every moment that they're with their parent about what everybody's doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And understanding why is that? That their parent can, their loved one, whoever it is, can live successfully and say, well, I like it here, the food is good, we do stuff, it's okay. And, except when they come home, is that is that a response to I'm far away, I can't be here, I feel guilty. Right. I can't have my loved one live with me. I, I, I can't believe they're changing. Mm -hmm. You and know, mortality, just seeing your parents' mortality or your loved one's mortality can be really, cause a lot of distress. And sometimes it's a sister or brother who's here in town and has picked the place where their loved one lives and then the dynamics in the family oh start to get mm -hmm. angry that you picked the wrong place or it's not right or why mm -hmm. aren't you watching this why aren't you watching that mm -hmm. and the poor person in town is thinking I'm doing the best I can you don't Understand you don't help it. enough and and so you can never know all the family dynamics and and in my my years of experience as a nurse these kind of situations only bring the best out in families for about two weeks <laughs> and then the stress of it puts them over the top and whatever stressors they've had their relationships, how they function, blows up and becomes out of control. Well, and the resident themselves, you, if they're cognitively impaired, that doesn't mean they have lost the ability to manipulate their family. <laughs> We've got lots of folks who live here very successfully, but when their families come, they're mad at their family, and therefore they're going to punish their family, or they're going to tell their family how horrible things right. are. You or they cry, the take, <laughs> take me home, they take me to, home, they know right? How to lay on because it's hard. So, yeah. It is. So, All of those things. So. Well, it's also hard, I think, um, you know, if you have a loved one that has Alzheimer's or dementia, and 
they, you know, the family member's initial reaction is, do you know who I am? Or, and the frustration back and forth between both sides of that with, you know, the cognitive person thinking, why, why don't they know who I am? And the person that's like, I should know who this person is, and now I don't, like, the so, communication, mm -hmm. yeah. Bringing it back to communication, mm -hmm. right, yeah. that our role is in education, helping maybe facilitate family meetings or helping reassure the folks, although sometimes it may not be ever what they want, is to know it's okay, but at least giving them some feedback that mm -hmm. really this, it is okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The, you know, they're worrying about my dad never, my dad hates corn. And every time I come, he's eating that corn, take that away from him. Okay, so, so I can understand that he didn't eat corn, but he does now. You know, well, that's wrong. And I mean, I can remember a lady coming in my office yelling at me about corn, and I'm like, okay, well, let's talk concrete. about this. It's right. something concrete that you can focus right. on. As exactly. opposed to, my dad doesn't even know who I am. Anymore. Exactly. My dad always walked to the mailbox every day. I want him to walk to the mailbox here. Okay, well, we can't da drag dad out of the house now. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to go outside anymore. He feels safe. And so it's about transitioning and helping them as best you can, educating, you know, let's talk about this. And nine times out of ten, the corn lady sitting down with her and talking about, you know, what, how do you think he's doing? And, and kind of diffusing the corn. In the end, it didn't matter anymore about corn. It was how bad she felt her dad was going to die with this terrible disease. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Focusing on the underlying. Exactly. What, what's up with this? It's not just corn. Corn is easily fixed. Don't give him any corn. <laughs> you know, that's an easy fix. She could have walked off, but she still would have been angry. Right. You've talked before about making sure that people, no matter who it is, the resident, the employees, family members, are acknowledged and heard. And so you have a resident, let's say, who's throwing his dinner plate across the floor or screaming out that he hates pork chops. You know, why do we have to eat these darn pork chops? So how do you suggest handling that from your perspective and I say acknowledging? Two words always that first come out of my mouth in anything is, I'm sorry. Right. Apologies. Even when it has nothing to do with you, an apology breaks at, takes you to a different level. It mm -hmm. also helps you, I think, to kind right. of internalize and Check to your, a place where you want to right. help to find a solution mm -hmm. instead of being defensive. So, so you're not throwing that pork chuck yeah. back at him. This is what you're eating. <laughs> no, you talk too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that you don't at all focus on the no. plate that's getting thrown or, mm -hmm. or the swear words that are coming mm -hmm. out of the mouth or mm -hmm. that it's, this is a person in distress. And so validating, mm -hmm. you have a right to feel that way. I'm sorry, what can I do to fix it? Mm -hmm. Lots of times when I say to a resident, is there something I can do to help? They'll think hard and long and then go, no. But they're fine, okay. I mean, because you've offered, it brings them to a place where, okay, somebody tried. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's similar for residents and employees too, that yep. they just want to know somebody's on their side. Right. So just letting them know that you're on their side and trying to help them. Right, because really, in some instances, when an employee gets really upset, we've all seen outbursts, tantrums even at times, right? And behaviors right. that you wouldn't normally see from them because they're emotionally charged or feeling like somebody isn't respecting their opinion or validating you know, what concern it is that they feel they've been wronged by, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it actually has pretty similar type behaviors in, in different right. instances. Mm -hmm. So how do you connect with the employees as well and look past those behaviors. Um, I've been told numerous times that the employees behave differently when I'm there than when I'm not there and I've had some sit-down meetings where things have gotten escalated but I just de-escalate it by saying I'm sorry let's stop for a second take a deep breath I'm here to help you I'm not you're not in trouble I want to fix the problem and again letting them know that I'm on their side I also communicate with respect at all times so I think that's why things don't always blow up to be as confrontational as they are some other time, or where they just don't feel. Or if they are blown up, to let that person deplete their feelings. That mm -hmm. you don't get out, tell them stop, or if, if, if they're not ready to stop, tell me more about that. How is it making me, how are you feeling? So that you let them get it all out. And by you giving the permission, 
that in and of itself kind of at least stops the swearing at you or mm -hmm. the, <laughs> that you're mm -hmm. interested, you care. I think it has to come from inside. I think you do right. genuinely have to want the best for this family member, for this resident, mm -hmm. for this employee. Mm -hmm. If you don't start from that place, it's mm -hmm. really hard to... Well, and I'm not an angry person, so I think sometimes that helps a little bit too because it really takes a lot to make me angry. So I think leaving the anger at the door or outside doesn't put the, somebody on the defense right away when you go in to meet with them. So this is a skill that definitely requires some learning and some practice. It's not, I would think that uh, many of our caregiver pool and, and certainly even the leadership pool that we have in this industry would struggle, you know, right away coming into this field and knowing how to adapt um, and try and look past those behaviors rather than trying to defend or, you know, fuel those behaviors. That's our natural tendency, you know, to stick up for ourselves. So what do you guys um, believe in or feel that has proven to be beneficial to you and, and your employees to help grow them in this critical skill? I think education, but not expecting no mistakes. Right. Mm -hmm. So that when the mistake happens, it's an opportunity to talk about what happened. I mean, I, I had a caregiver come and, you have to do something about that, Mr. Smith. He shook his cane at me. Mm -hmm. Oh, why did Mr. Smith shake his cane at you? Well, he always parks in the handicapped parking and there was no parking there today and so I parked in that spot. So then you can't right away say, well, gee, Burris, that was kind of stupid. Why didn't you just go move your car? <laughs> <laughs> right. So you have to say, all right, well, what do you think he was thinking? So you actually have to take that opportunity, which is a really pretty obvious, simple mm -hmm. solution, mm -hmm. but you can't treat it like that. You have to say, all right, when he did that, how were you feeling? What mm -hmm. were you thinking? And use it as a, okay, next time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how are you going to behave differently? Which is as simple as, oh, when I got here, there were no parking spots. I'll go move it now, right? Right. <laughs> and learning to recognize when they're feeling that pinch of, yeah. okay, I'm getting angry, and to pull themselves out. So never to respond to anything when you're angry, to step back and let yourself have time to, I like to say process, <laughs> mm -hmm. or but just to pull yourself together a little bit before you go into it. We talk a lot about leaving, like waiting till you're not angry anymore. Right. Lori, you're really good at saying, well, tell me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that was, I think, you know, it, watching people, like, be angry and yell and holler and, you know, coming from I, being resident-focused and seeing people do stuff that, well, you know, if you, I come and take Janice's water and I don't say, Janice, I'm going to get you some more water, and I just take it, Janice might slug me. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that, and I watch, I you know, because that's how she responds. <laughs> that she's very protective of her water. But, but knowing that, too, she, that seeing those things, to be able to take a step back and say, wow, I heard you got hit. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. It's the natural... And, you know, nine times out of ten, I don't have to say much more than that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, how did that feel? How, how would that feel? I mean, I don't have to say, you know, do you see what you did wrong here? Mm -hmm. But the reason why that's all you have to say is because of the years of trust building, relationship mm -hmm. building that you've got mm -hmm. in right. place. So that when somebody says to me they got hit, they can actually tell me the answer yeah. themselves. Yeah. Because... It really is. It, that's the beauty of keeping staff, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you have been through it before, and they start to, just like that story about the dog that's peeing on the floor, or and so the guy gets taught, well, after he does that, throw him outside, throw him out the window. So now they ask, how does it work? And he says, well, he's great now. He pees on the floor, and he jumps out the window by himself. <laughs> right. So that's how you, you know, Right. It takes years and years and years. Well, and I so. think, too, I, I, I will go in the house and do something wrong. I will make a mistake. Oh, I will say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'll be like, I'll walk up to the staff and say, geez, did you see that? I really screwed that up. That wasn't the way to handle that, you know. I mean, you have to. So being you, real. Yeah. Being real that, yeah, I, I can see. I can stand outside the window and watch and say, oh, I know where this is going wrong. But I'm also really good at going wrong, too. I'm human. Mm 
-hmm. We are humans taking care of humans. Allowing them to be human. Exactly. And so there, we might have mistakes, but that's okay. I think a lot of times when you go into all you can say is what would you do differently next time? Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you their whole plan. And you know, a lot of times like that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. What can we do to support you to have that? You know, do you need more training? Yeah, just being a sounding board without judgment, mm -hmm. but allowing them to work through and find the answer, mm -hmm. you know, or a better way to apply it or respond right. in the next case so that we continue to grow and mm -hmm. we continue to grow in our confidence and in our skill. So what I'm hearing is that a big part of communication is to make sure that we're acknowledging their concerns, acknowledging their ideas, letting them be heard, which is something I teach on a lot in communication presentations is making sure that we're creating that space where people feel comfortable to share, because you talked about it, having that trusting relationship is really the foundational piece that people are willing to open up and admit their mistakes and yeah, talk with I think you. that was key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That being able, I mean, none of us are perfect. I'm not right. a perfect person yet. Right. So. Well, we're darn close. That's not what quite. I was going to say. So, <laughs> beyond that. So, making sure um, that we, we give Me them that. I myself all the time. <laughs> acknowledging and letting them be heard and looking beyond what's right in front of you. So, thanks for sharing, ladies.